Hi guys, welcome to Carport Woodcraft. I'm Cal. In today's video, we're going to be making this freestanding wardrobe. We built this for approximately about £40, so it's a right bargain for what you get. And there is another section which will be added on there by the end of the video. But for now, this is what you'll see. It's made out of some construction grade plywood which was reclaimed. It's also made out of 18mm MDF. Some handles what I bought off Amazon. Inside the clothes rail is an old sweeping brush handle and we've got some magnets to hold the door shut. Oh, and blum hinges. It's all soft clothes. And it's solid as a rock. So without further ado, we'll get on with the build. Here's a rough sketch of what we're going to do then guys. It's a pretty standard wardrobe size here. Uh, 850 millimeters by one meter 20 1200 mil and we've also added this size this part here which is going to have cubby holes in it and that's 315 mil again by 1220 mil the depth is 510 and we're going to build these as two separate carcasses we're going to build this section here and this section here and then we're going to attach them with screws once these two cabinets are made, then we'll build the doors. I've laid all my cuts out on this one sheet of MDF. And this one sheet is going to comprise of the four panels I need for each side portion of the wardrobe. Most of the cuts are going to be done using the track saw. And I'm going to be using these track clamps here because they're excellent at keeping the track stable and making sure you get nice straight cuts. Just going to make two cross cuts now to get these side panels to the final dimensions. And I've got this square guide for the track saw, which is great helping with this. So you just need to put one mark where you want to cut and then just rip across the grain. And you should have a nice square cut. We're now cutting the top and bottom and the side panels go all the way up to the top like so and then the top and bottom are fixed in between like so so uh, these are 18 mil a piece so we need to minus these off the overall off the overall length what we want of this so the the small cabinet with the cubby holes is 315 wide and minus the 36 that takes down to 279 and then the larger wardrobe area is 850 millimeters minus the 36 takes us down to 814 millimeters so we'll cut the top and bottom now for the joinery then we're going to be using biscuits and the top and bottom of the wardrobe go together like so there's a butt joint and i've just done a, a mock-up here just to make sure i'm Putting my biscuits in the correct place and just referencing off the table directly and using this block 2x4 as a stabilizer to hold this nice and square this works just right so biscuit there biscuit there push them together and you've got a nice square joint I also had a line where the biscuits are going to go and which surface so I don't put them on the wrong side. So one of the best things about having everything on wheels is that you can move things out that way when you've got a large glue up, which is good. And I'm just going to glue up now, glue all the biscuits into position, and then I'm going to add two screws each side, each side to use as a clamping mechanism. And then we're just going to add these triangles onto the onto the cabinet to keep it all square while it's drying. That 
nothing accidentally falls over. I've got a clamp on the bottom just down there, just supporting this piece. So last thing you want is this falling over. And the other side's just leaning up against the workshop wall. thousand four hundred and seventy one thousand four hundred and seventy so I'm lucky there it's bang on square from just laying it down but if it isn't whatever the larger number is say this was one thousand four hundred and seventy five and that was one thousand four hundred and seventy all I do is put a little bit of pressure on this side pushing the whole frame and it'll twist it back and I'll just do it a tiny little bit at a time and measure both sides until uh, you know until they're the same. All I'm going to do now is just attach these. And this will just hold it in this square position while it dries overnight. And this will just stop anything from moving or twisting while it's drying up. Just check it again. And fill all the screw holes as well, forgot to say that. For the back panel, I've got this 9mm ply. This should do the job nicely. It's nice and strong, and it's just a spare bit we've got lying about. I'll put a grooving bit on the router, and I'm just going to put a groove all the way up around the back panel at 9mm to sit that nicely in. Next step, measure the backing board size, 1882, 833. I'll take 1mm off at each side just so I know that it's definitely going to fit. For the backing board we're using the track saw to cut it because the table saw ain't quite got the capacity and uh, that was 1182. From the router you're going to find out the corners of the cabinet are rounded so you're going to need to square these off with a chisel. You've got to be really careful when you're doing this as well because the end grain of the plywood can split easily. Now I'm just going to pop a little bead of glue around the edges just to help secure it and this will make it lovely and strong once the backing board's glued and pinned in there. And that's always a good feeling when you flip it over and you haven't had any blowouts. Next job then is to spray paint these and we're using this 2-in-1 lacquer and primer. And it says here it's silk matte. I don't know what that means because it's either silk or matte. But I get this from Aldi. It's really good stuff and it's really easy to spray with the Wagner spray gun. So I'll quickly show you how I do that. I'm just going to spray this panel and I've, I've put the paint in there and I've probably watered it down about... 10 or 15 percent just by eye and now we're going to get the first coat on a nice thick coat for the first coat and then we're going to add three more coats steam nibbing in between this is why i'm glad i've built this wardrobe in two pieces uh working on your own in a workshop Building larger items like this, difficult. Uh, brace yourself. Now 
this is the last coat I've actually given it three coats and uh, it's covered really well denibbing in between with 240 grit and now I'm going to denib with some wet and dry uh, 400 grit and then I'm going to apply the last coat and I'm having to apply that with a roller because I'm getting way too much overspray it's going all over my tools so I'm going to have to devise some roll up sheets what pull down from the ceiling so I'm applying the last coat with the roller which will go on nice and I've got some good quality rollers so we'll denib now After you've denibbed then make sure you give it a good brush off or hoover down and then cut in all your corners and then get on it with your roller. You can get a really good finish anyway as long as you've got a nice quality roller and a good quality brush. What I like to do is just put it on nice and thick. Work it in all the different directions so you're getting every little groove, nook and cranny, grain of the timber, especially when it's like this cheap plywood. And then, nice and gently, just lay it off. And you should get a lovely finish, almost as good as a spray. After you finish painting then guys, just make sure you've got no runs or beads on corners and edges, which is where you normally get them. And that'll be it for today. Uh, I think we'll move on to a part two for this video because we've still got the doors to do, which are gonna be made out of 18 millimeter plywood. I've not seen them done like that before. I don't know if they'll work, uh, but we're gonna do them and inset them with some inset hinges. That one's gonna have some shelves and possibly some pull out trays in. Uh, but the, the final coat of paint looks great. And uh, yeah, so we'll continue on a part two. If you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, you can do that through PayPal or Patreon. So I'll catch you next week, guys, with a part two for this.